Let's resume our study of truth tables with an example. Take the sentence, if H and I, then H. Let's construct a truth table for it, starting with the header row. This sentence has two variables, H, I, connected conditionally with the antecedent containing the conjunction of H and I. But before we get started filling in the table itself, how many rows will our truth table need? The rule for computing how many rows we need in any given truth table is actually quite simple. It's just base 2, which is the number of possible truth values, true and false, that we're using, exponentiated by the number of atomic sentences, that is, the number of variables that we're using. For a truth table with two variables, such as H and I, we would have base 2 raised to the second power equaling 4, the correct number of required rows. For a truth table with three variables, we would raise base 2 to the third power, or 2 times 2 times 2, thereby requiring a truth table with eight rows. If we had five variables, our table would need 32 rows, 2 to the fifth power. Our example sentence has two variables, h, i, so we have to use a four-row truth table. We can start by writing out all the possible combinations of truth and falsity for h and i in the reference columns. But here's a caveat. To ensure that we cover all the combinations, we'll need a consistent method for arraying the truth values, like this. The reference columns, the two columns all the way to the left, are filled in with the rightmost reference column alternating T's and F's, row by row. The next column over alternates sets of two T's and two F's, and for the third column from the right, if we had one, we would have sets of four T's and four F's. This would continue until re you reach the leftmost column. Every truth table with two or more variables will always have the top row in the reference column displaying all T's and the bottom row all F's. Although completely arbitrary, this convention is quite effective. You'll see how it works in the following example. After we're done filling in the reference column with T's and F's, we then copy those reference truth values to the same variables on the right side of the double line underneath the letters in the sentence, like so. We now need to complete the truth table by filling in the truth values for the connectives, albeit in the proper order. Since the horseshoe represents the main connective, we'll handle that last. We'll start with the subsentence H and I that uses the ampersand since it's the connective used in the antecedent of the conditional and therefore has a smaller scope than the main connective, the horseshoe. We'll apply the rule for conjunction, which states that both conjuncts must be true in order for the conjunction as a whole to be true. That situation exists only in the first row. So we'll place a T beneath the ampersand in the first row and F's in each subsequent row, like this. Next, we need to fill in the final column under the conditional. The conditional is the main connective of the sentence. So the whole sentence has the form if A then B. To fill the final column, we just need to look at the characteristic truth table for the conditional. For the first row, the sentence H ampersand I is true, and the sentence H is also true. The rule for the conditional asserts that conditionals are false if and only if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. That is not the case here. Filling in the rest of the column gives us the complete table. Now, this is very interesting. As you can see, the sentence if H and I then H is true for all possible combinations of truth values and therefore for all possible substitution instances. It doesn't matter what letters we use or what the letters mean. Whatever they mean, any possible set of sentence variables that are expressed in the form of if H and I then H will always be true. That's what we call a tautology in logic, a formula or assertion that is true in every possible interpretation. Next up, we'll see how the scope of a connective can be made crystal clear with the use of parentheses, brackets, and braces.